Hello and welcome back to my channel. Decorating the house for Christmas this year feels quite special because it's the first year since moving in that we've actually been able to do it properly. Over the last two years we've always had work being done to the house on the ground level so we haven't really done decorations in the same way that we might have done. Last year we didn't even buy a tree because our dining area and garage conversion, the construction side of that wasn't actually finished until around the 23rd of December so we didn't see a point in getting a tree. So this year getting a tree was really exciting. We bought this seven foot Norwegian fir from a local Christmas tree farm, which we stumbled upon during the first Christmas that we had in this house back in 2021. We love having a real tree, nothing beats that smell, and the experience of selecting the right one and then squeezing it into the car and driving home with Christmas songs on is something that takes me back to my childhood in Cornwall, where me and my mum would go to Trago Mills and carefully select our tree. It had to have the right amount of bushiness. Then we'd drive back home in my dad's convertible, which he didn't know about, with the tree stuck out the top. Now, we always leave the tree to drop for 24 hours once it's in place, so we'll come back to this toward the end of the video. In the kitchen, we've never had any decorations, and this house is considerably larger than our previous home. So in the same way as we have done with furniture, we've had to collect it bit by bit over the last two years. Christmas decorations are also something that we'll need to collect over time. That said, I did really want to do something in here, given that this is the area we spend most of our time. We have some faux fur garlands, which are mainly eucalyptus. I kind of feel like they're not super Christmassy, but it's what we have to work with at the moment. Now, last year I put a couple of these on the handrail up the stairs, but this year, surprise, surprise, we are having work done upstairs all the way up to Christmas. So it didn't make sense to do anything up the stairs this year, given that people are gonna be up and down constantly. Using some little command clips, I've attached a few of these to our kitchen shelf so that I can clip the garlands into place. And then after a bit of faffing around with them, getting them to look just right, I'm gonna pop all the bits back on the shelf. Now we've been incredibly lucky this year because we've been given a couple of really, really beautiful advent calendars. One of which is this one from Dalesford, which is so cute and full of lovely little goodies that we can hang on the tree and things that we can eat. So I wanted to put it somewhere quite central that we can open it together each day. And the structure of it is so well made and sturdy and obviously it's really cute, this little house design. So we can reuse this and make our own advent calendar from it in future years. Our second advent calendar is this one by Diptyque, which I can already smell just getting it out of the packaging. And this is going to be full of their festive scents and of course, some of their iconic classics. So this one, I'm gonna pop out in the hallway. Now, I have a real sweet tooth. So obviously Christmas is a great time for me because there are so many sweet festive treats. And I like to have some of these rather readily available for my picky fingers. So I'm using some jars which we usually have for biscuits in our pantry cupboard. These are just from Ikea, but they're a pretty decent size, so they fit a lot in there. And in these, I'm just putting some of our favorite Christmas treats. First of all, Simon's personal favorite, Speculoos Biscuits. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. These ones are from Tesco and they're shaped into little reindeers. And then my ultimate festive favorite, Lebkuchen. These ones are dark chocolate covered and are filled with, I don't know, some kind of jam. They're amazing. And we discovered these last year. And to be honest, I ate way too many bags of these than I care to admit over the festive period. But they are delicious. And again, they remind me of Christmas growing up because my mum loved and still does love Little, who of course are German and they've always had Lebkuchen at Christmas. To add a little festive touch to the jars, I'm just using some Hessian ribbon from one of my craft boxes and tying that around the top and finishing with a little bow. Now, I know many of you will be wondering how long the treats will stay fresh in a jar like this. Well, they won't really be in there long enough for me to tell you, I'm afraid. Okay. I know not everyone is a fan of a mince pie, but I think at this point it will be no surprise to you that I love them. 
Now, I wish I could say that I baked these ones myself, but alas, my baking skills aren't quite that advanced, so they are store-bought. Delicious nonetheless, and they will sit here on the side, ready for, well, me. We have some preserved olive wreaths, which I bought from Zara Home last year, and these will sit on our glass doors into the kitchen. Some clear suction hooks, which are perfect for glass doors because then the wreaths can float without any string. However, you could also use the no damage command hooks on glass doors or any other door that I use for our wreaths on our front door, which I have shown in previous videos. Speaking of which, that was a nice segue, it's time for the grand wreath change on the front door. Well, it's not really so grand, I literally just changed them over. Both our autumn and Christmas wreaths were custom orders from a florist in Faversham. I'll leave the details down below in the description box for anyone who's interested. And we chose to have both of them made from foliage that would last once dried out and no longer fresh. So our autumn wreath is going into its third year and this is the second year for our Christmas wreath. And they both still look great in my opinion. Here in our little entrance area, I'm removing the autumnal Amaranthus caudatus from this oversized vase and replacing it with something a little bit more festive, pine branches. Now I usually take some branches from our garden, but Simon cut some of our trees back a couple of weeks ago, so I don't really want to be cutting any more off. Ideally, we should have timed it a little bit better, but hopefully we can go back to garden branches next year. I'm also adding some pine cones to the vase and a hessian ribbon around the rim tied in a bow so that this all ties in with the wreath that we have hanging above. This is an artificial wreath but I think it does look pretty good and it has this really pretty golden cowbell which hangs in the middle. I'm using another little command hook which I stuck to the top of the canvas frame and then clipped the string into place. These little hooks are pretty strong and easy to remove, so they're ideal for Christmas decorations. And I always keep my hooks and reuse them. You just need to get a little bit more of that double-sided sticky stuff to attach them to surfaces. To add another little touch of gold, I don't like to go too crazy with gold, we have these little metal Christmas trees, which are a new addition this year, and they're going to sit on the book next to the lamp. They're quite minimal in design and I like that because I have got a lot of foliage here so I didn't want it to look too fussy. Outside Simon and I are going to put up the lights, however as these have been done a little earlier than usual so that we could film it for you guys to see, they won't be properly turned on every evening until December the 1st when we'll have them on a timer. That's not to say that we think there's anything wrong with having lights and decorations up before December 1st. You do you. We have them running all the way down our covered porch area and it really does look so pretty when they light up amongst the wisteria and all of the foliage. Now I'm going to do the rest of the outside entrance lights and just give this area a little bit of a tidy up. Now as I did for Halloween, I'm adding a festive doormat because we don't have much decor out here aside from the lights and wreath. Our box trees have a set of lights each. These are just outdoor battery operated lights, so there's no cables running inside to plug sockets. We also have another set of these for our olive tree, which I know isn't particularly festive, but it does look really pretty with these little fairy lights. These battery lights have an automatic timer, so all you have to do is turn them on at the time you'd like them to come on, and they then stay on for six hours and then go off for 18. We use rechargeable batteries and have found that they only need one recharge around about the middle of December before coming down for New Year's Eve. Back in the lounge and the smell of the Christmas tree has filled this space and it's starting to drop nicely now after having been in position for a few hours. I'm going to make a start on the mantle now and Lights for Fun have supplied us with a few bits for the festive season. We have this frosted berry and pinecone garland which is pre-lit and is going to sit along the length of the mantle beam. A lot of the branches are wired so I spent a bit of time faffing with them to make the garland look more full. It comes with a remote as well so it can be turned on and off if you were just sitting down on the sofa and they can be put on a timer so they would come on for 6 hours like the outdoor lights and turn off for 18 hours. Now one thing I really love is candles. Scented, pillar, tapered, tea lights, I love them all. But there are some downsides to candles. One we've noticed in particular is that they create dust and can create masking on walls and ceilings, which if like us, you have light walls, it can be pretty annoying. 
So we're trying out these electronic candles from the True Glow range at Lights for Fun. I've heard good things about these in the past, so I was looking forward to seeing them for myself. They are made from real wax on the outside, so look and feel like a real candle. Now I won't lie to you, when up close you can tell that the flame, obviously, isn't real, but the effect they give off is really nice. And as I said, they're definitely a more practical option if you don't or can't have a real flame. We also have some for our dining table. These ones are tapered, so they fit perfectly into our candlesticks. And again, they're remote controlled as a set, so you don't have to constantly take them out and turn them all on and off individually. As it's just the two of us, we don't use the dining table every night because we tend to eat in the kitchen, but it just feels nice to have it all set for when friends come over at the festive period. We left the tree to settle in and drop overnight, so I came in to check on it in the morning to see if it was ready for the decorations. We always listen to Christmas songs or have a Christmas film on when doing the tree, and I know that we're not alone in that tradition. And of course, I always have some festive snacks to hand. I think it's best practice for Christmas tree decorating that you always start with the lights, but if you do it differently, I'd love to hear about your technique in the comments below. One thing I do love, which doesn't fit into any theme at all, which is surprising for me as I usually like things very well coordinated, is our tree decorations from various trips we've taken. A lot of them are Disney, as we usually buy a Disney decoration from each trip. That's a tradition Simon and I started after our first Disney trip together. And then we have some others from trips to Canada and our various road trips through the States. I also have to shout out to Debs, who a few years ago made us these lovely decorations of the bees. It can be a bit hard and very emotional hanging this one of Bean because he's not with us anymore, but we love seeing his handsome little face there on the tree. And these decorations will always stay in our collection and adorn the tree every year. Well, that's us all decked out for Christmas this year. I'd love to hear about your decorating traditions, Christmas memories, or favorite tree decorations if you have them. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.